Wow, I feel like I should be singing, right? That's like an amazing night. So good morning, everybody. Um, so I head up Cantor, uh, the Media Insights Division here, and this is probably one of the key questions that we get a lot. We go, oh, TV, we're moving everything into digital. So who's, who's on Team TV? Who's like, yeah, TV is awesome, I'm not moving anything on TV. Hands, hands. Come on, stand. Okay, who's, who's on Team Digital? Like, yeah, let's move everything to digital. Oh. Like, like, oh. Listen to that, everyone's like, oh, no, this one, that one. So here we go, right? Let's panic. Time to panic, people. Why? Because in a market like ours, we go, oh, but everyone in global is moving to digital, hey? So we need to move to digital. No idea how to do that, but we're going to move all our funds to digital. Or we go, oh no, TV, TV's mm, it's not working for us, so we're gonna pull money off TV. Or we go, no, we have to have TV. Or the my favorite, my absolute favorite thing is, yo, our market share is declining. We're gonna put more money into media. Yes? Um, we're panicking, market share is declining, or panicking because we need to, to uh, make sure that our market share is stable, media. So anyone who um, is probably in some sort of marketing role will know that. You, you probably get lambasted quite a lot, going, oh, everything's declining, we need more media. The media guys are like, oh, we're doing everything we can in media. Um, so panic, panic ensues everywhere. So if, if you did, um, or if you were a little bit awake in Jane's session, you would know um, that media only accounts for that 25% in general. However, it's still really important, right? So today, um, I wanted to chat a little bit more about video. And the reason I wanted to talk about video is because, and that's usually where we tend to spend most of our money. So TV ads are expensive, especially you know if you want to win a can, then it's even more expensive. Um, so, but but we sit with this. <laughs> so in um, the challenge of growing market share, it's tempting to look for an easy answer, but unfortunately, guys, one does not exist. Um, so this is from a very clever guy, not maybe very famous worldwide, not a not a Jeff uh, Bezos. But he is our um, chief global analyst at Cantar, Nigel Hollis, and I love that. So I was like, yes, you are right, no easy answer exists. And this is probably why, right? Because um, this is a time series data. So this is the reason about share of voice. So we're spending more in media, we're going to spend more, we're going to spend more. When James showed you that 25% contribution, that was a point in time. So then we thought, oh, everyone here is going to go, no, no, but over time, right? So let's look over time. And actually, over time, it's still the same. So over time for brands to grow, total media share of voice, 19%. Then there is this brilliant thing called effective share of voice. And then everyone goes, well, what the hell is that? So effective share of voice, in our world at least, it's when you overlay a share of voice with an amazing creative. Yes. This is not an average creative. This is not like uh, sort of okay creative. This is a good creative. So you have good media and you have a good creative. And then over time it accounts for 30%. <laughs> We're not quite up to the 80%. Yes. So, so throwing more money behind our brand when it's our brand share is declining is not necessarily going to save our brand, um, but we really did want to talk about how do we optimize where we are spending our money. So if you are doing TV, and you know TV is not dead, it's not dying, um, and this is why, because like everyone watches TV, right? This is the establishment <coughs> survey figures, and 96% uh, of everyone watches TV, and then 61% say, oh, we've used internet in the past seven days. <laughs> oh, shame, and 4% went to cinema. <laughs> so depending on where you are, and I love this, I love sitting in wardrobes because then everyone argues. So if, if you are in cinema, you're like, guys, but it really works. No, no one watches cinema. But it really works. No one watches cinema. And the thing is, it's not an either or, right? It's where um, you should be making the trade-off. So what is the role that each of those channels play? 
I also love this because, again, it depends what side of the fence you're on. People either talk about audience, so they go, oh, 37 million people watch TV. Yes? On this radio station, I have 8 million listeners. There are 17 million people that use Facebook. And I go, that's lovely. And then I go, okay. But it's the cost of reaching those people. So it's not, it's not good enough just talking audience. It's about the cost of reaching that audience. It's great if you have 37 million people that watch TV. How expensive is it to reach, I don't know, the, the five people that own a Lamborghini and earn 4,000, 400,000 rand a month? Probably on TV, that's not the best way to be spending your money. So there's an audience thing involved. And from a TV point of view, we go, oh, but yeah, TV doesn't work yet because everyone's watching their mobile phones in ad breaks. And, and that's absolutely true, might be. This chart is the <coughs> behavioral data, if you like, from South Africa versus the globe. So next time your global counterparts go, oh, we need to move everything into digital, you go, that's great. Um, except in South Africa, 61% of all South Africans still watch live TV, the majority, um, and a little bit of online video. That's double the global average. So yes, it does differ by different target markets. So if you are very high income with your DSTV PVR, and we know there's only so, so many of them in the market, that might not apply to you. If you have your super, super, super fast fiber um, and Netflix, that might not apply to you. But that does apply to the majority of South Africa. The problem with TV is that even though everyone watches TV, um, we're doing a really, really piss poor job. Um, so this chart, what you're looking at, comes from an ad track database, right? It looks at the cut-through of TV advertising. So this is consumers that spontaneously recall a TV ad. This is not us going, hey guys, here is an ad. Have you seen this? No. This is us saying, oh, have you seen any advertising for F&B? And they go, yes. And we go, brilliant. Tell us what you saw. And they go, um. This means that little magic 23% there, that is people that go, yes, I saw this ad and had this guy in and this is what he was doing. Spontaneous, correctly verifying an ad. As little as three years ago, that was 37% of all ads cut through. Now, we're at 23%. That was year to date. And that's pretty bad. One in five new brand ads are cutting through. And one in two are below average. Now you think about how much money you're investing in TV from a media point of view and you are not getting share. <laughs> There's a really nice picture right there. You might be spending a lot, but are you actually cussing through? Um, and th this is why. <laughs> so people in general, um, the average noting was 22% and last year it's 17 so the whole behavioural thing, I oh mean, yeah, I don't care what's on TV, I'm on my mobile phone, I'm switching off, I'm tuning out. It's a real thing, right? So it's about you and on TV, you have to overcome those challenges. It doesn't mean that TV as a channel is not amazing. It means that us as marketers have to create ads that are better, that overcome those challenges. Ah. Oh, it's two sides of the same thing. Um, and there, just like anything in the world, there are TV categories that have higher memorability. These are ads that in general people just remember more. Anyone want to have a guess at the number one category in South Africa? It's fast food so close, Brad. So carbonated soft drinks, hey? So this is indexed, this is indexed to the average of 100. So 100 is like average. So this tells you how much more recall ads in the CSD category have. 
The very next category is fast food. Ah. Followed by creamers in tea and coffee what? and groceries. <laughs> so you look at that and you go, wow, South Africans like to eat, eh? Yeah. I mean, that's like, it's like to eat. But also, I think we are, we are very conscientious because the very next category is dental, so we also like to brush our teeth, which is great. And then if you look at the bottom five categories that people do not remember and tune off to you completely, we have games and toys, yeah. jewelry and watches, sporting and camping equipment, security firms, and agriculture and gardening. So what I take out of that is that we love to eat and drink, and we hate anything recreational. <laughs> what this also says is it says that obviously it doesn't mean that categories are more or less um, impactful. It means that some categories just have worse ads in general than other categories, right? And this is why it's so, so important to think about your category in the broader sense. Now in the booklet that everyone has, it's got a list of all the categories in it. Here's a look at the booklets now. Okay. Um, it's got a list of all the categories and they're all indexed. So you can see where you fall. So, if you are a fast food brand and you are comparing yourself to other fast food brands, you're great because you're comparing yourself to the top of the top. If you are a short term insurance brand, you are comparing yourself to other short-term insurance brands in isolation, um, and you're not quite at the top of the category. It could be um, that you're a, you're a watch you're a watch brand, and you go, I have the best watch ad in the market, which is brilliant. But you're actually the best of the worst of the bunch. Yeah. So it's really important that you think about your advertising beyond your category. You want to know why? Because the average ad break in TV is not one watch versus one watch versus another watch. It's BMW, then it's got some Omo auto washing powder thrown in there, and Pampers, Mackies, and it's got your Sun City break trip, and then it's got a few other brands and an ad break. And then you're like, huh, does anyone even remember all those brands I just listed? If you do, you're very awake, okay? <laughs> but now we're expecting consumers to not only remember our ad in our category, but actually that's not true. That's not the reality. Because consumers see everything, everywhere. So whilst it's great that you can break through in your category, you are competing with the fast food ads as well. Because everyone only has so much space in the head to think about advertising. So, what is the thing that matters? Is to find the creative sparkle. You need to make sure that your creative is great. So Fran's going to be talking to us about creative. Woo! Nats is going to be taking us through the best light ads. And you want to know what they have in common? This, the creative sparkle. The thing that consumers remember about your ad. The central connecting idea. And it's beautiful and it all comes together. And then we go, oh, that's TV. But guess what? Digital's no different. Digital video is not a one size fits all. In South Africa, we've got video platforms that work really, really well, and ones that everybody hates. So if you um, give me an app reward, I, I play those mobile games, okay? I will watch your 30 second video to get my life to continue in my game. It's okay, I'm there. It might not be 100% relevant to me, but I will remember that ad because I'm waiting for my life. So, that works really well. And then, for the love of everything sacred, unskippable pre-roll. Why? Just, just why is the question. Like, we hate it, consumers hate it, so why? Why do that to me and my life and everyone else is the question. Um, 
So again, like TV, we know there's lots of different channels, lots of different planning strategies, lots of different categories, and it is the same when it comes to digital. It's really important. And also everyone skips. So, we get this thing where we go, oh, we don't do TV, hey? Because people on their mobile, yes, they're not watching your ad on TV, they're on their mobile and they're skipping it, because they ain't watching it there either. So, the thing is, is what do we do then in the world of digital? We have a magic three seconds, guys. Three seconds. So, count with me, one, one, two, three, brilliant. And in those three seconds, you need to make sure that your brand is in there. And by your brand, I mean not just your brand logo. I mean your brand, your brand identity. It's important that it's in those first three or five seconds, right? Because those are the ones that do really, really well. It still matters, despite the fact that people are skipping, if your brand is there, you still get ad recall. So make sure that you're working with that. And the other thing is, you need to design for context. So um, we have lots of ads that still have sound, or rely on you know, video, or rely on music, or voiceover, in a mobile space, now don't do that. Because then I'm sitting in a meeting and I want to like, want to check out my Facebook sign. I don't want the sound, right? Because that is consumer behavior. You need to understand that that is how people are consuming the channel. So please, if you have this beautiful TV ad that is reliant on music and voiceover and emotion and the brand comes right at the end, Guess what? That's absolutely not going to work in a digital space. You really need to develop for the context, which is exactly what Jane was saying earlier. So, I'd like to... Ah, and the other thing is time, the length of an ad. It is no surprise that in digital, the shorter the better. And there's a big difference between ads that are short versus ads that are long. And if you see that first little dark grey bar, it says digital ads that are 30 seconds or more don't work because guess what? No one's watched them all the way through, yeah. which is brilliant. So ad recall very, very low um, with that. And this is why the context is important. So I want to bring it back. If you remember what Jane said, yes, context. TV is not the same. So having an ad in a... In a in a slot, in a social media slot or sports slot is not the same. Having an ad in pre-roll is not the same as having an ad in Facebook. YouTube and Facebook both have digital video but they don't work in the same way. Why? Because when I go to YouTube, what am I doing? I'm actively searching for content. So ads in that space are great but guess what? They need to be really relevant to what I am searching for. In the world of Facebook, it's cool because I'm chilling and I'm scrolling. So if something's not totally relevant, it's okay. So relevance and context are really, really key and you need to keep that in mind. And ultimately, all, all platforms with digital video can do all things. So if you're in Team TV, Yes, so there were a few people on Team TV at the beginning, yeah. And then there were a few people that were in Team Digital, yeah. Guess what? It's actually not an either or. It's not digital video is killing the TV star, and it's not TV is dying, and it's not digital is now everything to everyone. It really comes down to two incredibly simple things. Context is key and creative is king. And those two things will ensure that your video strategy, whatever it is, works. Because without those two, it doesn't matter how much money you put behind TV, if your creative is really bad, it's still going to be really bad. If you put lots of impressions in digital, your creative is bad, it's still going to be bad. So context is really important and please do the whole creative is awesome thing. Thank you very much.